Hey guys, Kyle Shoffa here. So in this tutorial, we're going to learn about uh, units and actors and models. Yeah, units, yeah, exactly, actors, models. And yeah, we're not really uh, going to be going much outside of that scope. So, and yeah, you just saw the hydralis. That was a green hydralis, and he's like a ghost. Uh, that's what we're going to be making. So let's uh, get into it. So basically, this is broken down to three things: as models, actors, and units. And uh, basically, uh, how this is as a unit is what has all the actual uh, information on a uh, that holds all the information and it basically takes an actor and the actor takes the model and that's how the actor looks and then however the actor looks that model uh, from that model the unit will use the actor for itself and then therefore basically the unit is using the actor that's using the model that's the breakdown here. Okay, so I'm gonna minimize that. I'm just gonna delete this. Start over. All right, so let's just get right into it. Uh, open data F7. The little marine up there. Um. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna close this. I'm gonna start a new. New map, new arcade map. Just include that. Okay, just do this. Alright. So let's go to the data editor. Now what we're gonna make is a uh, green hydralisk that has opacity, which basically means it looks kinda like a ghost or it looks faded or it looks Basically, it just takes the, uh, the actor and adds opacity, if you know what opacity is. It basically controls um, how much of the actor to show, I guess is the best way to put it. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to search Hydralisk. We're going to go to the Models tab. Now, you don't have to have all these tabs open. I just have it um, for when, for my own purposes but uh, all you need is units actors and models these three tabs now we're going to go to models and you want to find the hydralisk model it's just going to say hydralisk um, there's going to be a lot of different kinds of models here but we're just going to find hydralisk and parent unit that's important so all right so let's go over the settings of a model so um uh, I'm just going to do the important ones. Uh, events. Um, no. It's radius. Radius is the. Um, pretty sure that's the. Like. How big it is. Like when you select. I don't know. You can, you can mess around with these. Radius. Selection radius. And shadow radius, I think, is when you hover your mouse above it and you try to click on it. Like the bigger you make this, you can click on it farther away from the unit, and you'll still be able to click on the unit itself. It just makes it so you can. It makes this bit uh, the bigger uh, radius that you can select the unit around the unit bigger. <clears throat> and uh, shadow, I think, is the size of the shadow or whatever. I don't know. You can mess around with that. Uh, scale, minimum, maximum. You should have these the same. If you want random. Like zerglings, um, they have different maximums and minimums. This will make the zergling look different sizes. It'll basically choose a random scale in between both of these. Right now, for Hydralis, it's just 0.75 uh, for all of them. So it's always going to show up as 0.75 in size. That's the scale. Scale is how uh, large um, an object an object is. Um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty simple, um, don't need to worry about all this. 
the only thing I think else we're going to do here is go to the art call in model right here and we're going to open this now this is where uh, the magic comes from so you basically got uh, a model which takes an asset the actual model model and it takes it and it uses that as its visual how it actually looks like okay now we can actually browse and we can put uh, see here you can find different models uh, these are just random things I'm going through like see here you got uh, the different hydros model this guy um, premium whatever this is and you got the primal hydralis which is right here and these you see them exploding these are the different um, death animations which a death animation is just a model playing the animation so when he dies it will play this model uh, this is like corrosive acid death this is fire death that's explosion that's uh, I think regular death I don't know but yeah uh, I'm actually I'm gonna click on this guy because he looks kind of cool um, oh I noticed this is a portrait model which is basically displayed in the portrait area it's more high quality it does not have any animations it's not usable for anything else other than portraits so that's what that is if you're wondering and this is just a regular game model that you see so we're, I'm just gonna click on that you can change the model there um, and I, honestly I never really mess with models because all of them are ready if you want to find this hydralis you can just search hydralis um, I mean this specific kind of hydralis you can just search hydralis uh, what is it premium noxious yeah that's right there um, see it's already it's already created a model that holds that model asset I guess you can call it a model asset and you can use that for uh, your actors which we'll get into next so go to our hydralisk and so we've edited that model we've changed it now what we're going to do is go to actors so I think that's a good point go to my paint I created this um, I'm just going to minimize this because I want to recreate it so it's more <clears throat> easy to break down alright so what you basically got is you got your your model you got your actor and you got your unit and a little more space so basically how this works is uh, your model is just the visual thing it just um, it has no other no other role and the editor rather than just being uh, a visual reference it's just something that looks like something it shows the model and what happens is this model um, this actor right here takes this model and then it creates the model in game it creates something that you can see in the actual game and um, then what happens is the actor is hooked up to the unit the unit uses the actor which uses in turn uses the model and then that is displayed in game and can be used for the unit so the unit uses the actor the actor uses the model and that creates an awesome looking dude who I made right here who has a gun thing and a sword and whatever like that so this is the unit he uh, uses the actor and the actor displays the actual guy in the game so he, he's walking around and whatever uh, the unit holds all the, the data all the information all the health all the abilities um, but he is not visible without an actor and actor 
is invisible without a model. Basically what a model is, is it acts as the middleman. If you know what that is. Middleman is basically just a guy in between two or more parties or more people or more objects or whatever that acts as um, the giver and receiver that like takes one bit of information from one thing and gives it to the other rather than just um, like the unit giving something straight to the model or the model giving it straight to the unit. The actor takes both of them and sends information back and forth. It acts as the middleman. So the actor um, as unit uh, breakdown. Yeah. Oh, looks like shit. Whatever. Uh, okay, so now let's see. Yeah, the, the unit just holds the data. And it's important you get this right here. What's going on right here? This, what I'm showing you. It's important that you get this because then you'll really helps. It'll really help you understand what is going on when you're making a unit, and when you want to change it to however you look, however you want it to look or or do things. So the unit is just the data, models, the visuals, and then. Uh, yeah, that's so that's pretty much it, the whole unit breakdown of how things work in the data editor. Alright, so let's go back here. Now we're going to go to our Hydralisk actor. Actor type is unit. Um, you can have different actor types. You can have, um, let's see, like you got doodads, which are just things you place around just for looks. You got uh, missiles. Um, which is like when you fire something it is a missile I'm not gonna get into that um, something else yeah actors that are sounds actually um, something actors take the sounds and to and then they play them and then the sound itself is just like an asset it's just like a model it's just like an asset the actor takes it and it uses it and let's see what else you got um, there's actor types. If I double click on one of these, like Hydralis, mm. no, I won't get into it then. Okay, uh, moving on. Let's just go to actor. All right, so here's the important things you need to know about actor. Um, so you got a portrait. I'll just start from top. Portrait is how uh, you know the portrait model, however it looks in the portrait. That's pretty simple. We'll get back to events. Uh, hero icon, uh, just an icon for the unit. Highlight tooltip. When you have a unit in game, this is the actual Hydralisk, so you can know you can see the model has changed. When you highlight it, you put your cursor over it. It'll display the name right above it. Uh, in this case, it's going to show. Hydralisk, because that's his name. You can put like, let's all change that. You can put like Bob, yo, or something. And uh, yeah, then I was gonna say Bob, yo, whenever you put your mouse over it. Now, this is your armor icon and your shield icon. Um, those are pretty self explanatory. I'm not gonna get into those. You know, icon that's just. The unit icon uh, wireframe. This is uh, wireframe is basically the uh, shows how healthy the unit is. You know, displays the unit. Wireframe is green to red, depending on its health. And aliases. Not gonna worry about that. Not gonna worry about that. I think walk animation movement is uh, the speed at which it makes the unit run, or or makes the speed of the Changes the speed of the unit's running or moving animation when it's moving. So, yeah. Uh, model flags. Not gonna worry about that. Uh, death effects. Just double click on that. If you go here, normal. Uh, don't worry about all these. Just 
focus on normal. Uh, we're going to go all the way down. And these two slots right here, uh, the model, Hydrolisk Death. This is the model that uh, is shown when the unit dies. So if we change this, Hydrolisk Death, that's just his regular model. When he dies, it's going to play that model. But if we change it to something like oh, Hydrolisk Den, it's going to create that Hydrolisk Den model when he dies. And the sound is just the sound when he dies. So now I just modified it so when he dies, it's going to create a Hydrolisk Den model. Uh, which is kind of ridiculous, but whatever. It's, uh, See macros only more about these bar offset and width. The offset is how high the health and energy bar is uh, above the unit, whether you want it like up here or lower, or whatever. Width is how wide you want the health and energy bar to be, if you want small or large. Uh, group icon that is how that is the icon that is shown within the group panel, usually in the center here in game. And you're not gonna worry about all that. I think there's one more thing. Yes, the the art colon model. This is the model it takes. It's, you, you can see here the model. Um, you can see the green. Green, by the way, uh, just means modified. If if the game if if the um, if the as, if the asset is just preset it hasn't been untouched it'll show in blue if it's been modified then it'll show in green or if it's something user created user modified it'll show in green blue is just how it normally is um, how it comes with the editor so that's what that means so you can see our Hydro's model you can see that it's linked to right here this model uh, parameter so you can change this and this will change because I usually don't edit models basically what you do let's let this load basically what you do is you can select the model right here see I can select that premium skin noxious and uh, hit that and see it's the same model because it uses the same model asset as Hydralisk and now you go up here see it show, oh, shows the model it's been edited it's green now I go back down here I just want to but yeah uh, just going back I never really make custom models you take whatever models there I usually do and you put it into the actor and the actor is what you use to customize the model and you can customize it you can change like everything about it through the actor you don't need to use um you don't need to create different models or do anything in models really unless you're importing a custom model or something but uh basically with the actor what you can do is you can change the color you can change the opacity you can modify the animations you can change how big it is the scale you can give it different it's basically what you change everything about it. it has all the different modifications you can go through yourself um, through by yourself and look over all the different things you can do so we're gonna go back down here uh, model build placements so sure all right so make sure it's recording uh, build is basically the model that is displayed while the unit is being constructed placement is the model that um, you know how if you have like a pro if you have like a, a worker and you're gonna build something you're gonna place something it shows like a, uh, a faded out version of that structure they're gonna place um, that's the placement so you can make that anything if I just made it placement hydralisk it's just gonna be a hydralisk that you that's gonna be connected to your cursor when you place it but I'm not going to get into those any more than that. Uh, scale. The scale. This is um, the size. This is the size of your unit. So you can mess around with this. <clears throat> get some pretty interesting effects instantly. Uh, I'm just going to make all these point two. 
there's tab 0 0.2 each one of those then I'm hit OK and this is going to instantly change our hydralisk and make it miniature just go to regular game view if you hit shift control C it resets it to your how it looks in game the camera uh, so yeah this is how it's our hydralisk is looking right now because it's basically what this is it's at 20% of its normal scale. Okay, so if we change something like two, that's going to be two times larger than its normal scale. So now it's kind of big. And I'm just going to keep it there just to show you that. Uh, let's see, I think that's all. Alright. Now we're going to get into uh, events, let's double click that. Alright, so don't worry about any of this. Uh, first thing, everything is gray from, if you go all the way to the top, where it says Unibirth Hydros, go all the way down to right here, where it ends. All this, all these gray um, parameters or events or whatever, these are all like the preset that come with the unit and you don't want to edit them unless you know what you're doing because um, these are all the basic things that just cause the unit to function like uh, for example you got unit birth here unit birth create what this is going to do what this is going to do basically it's saying when this unit is born the hydralisk unit is born it's going to create this actor on that unit so if you deleted this there wouldn't be no actor and the unit would just be invisible because it would have no actor connected to it that's what that does and then you got unit revive oh, I'm not gonna get into that um, yes yeah, just all the basic stuff and blue Blue is basically all the stuff that comes with the specific actor, <clears throat> actor itself. Um, uh, a few things I just wanted to go over in the events. Uh, you got weapon start. See where it says this event right here. Weapon start, needle spines, attack start. This is basically an event. First off, these are an events where it shows a flag. And after this event fires, it's like a trigger. When this event fires, it's going to play these actions. And this is a condition for this action. So if this is true, then play this uh, action. So this event, weapon start, hydralisk needle spines, attack start, is basically going to fire when the hydralisk uses his weapon. So it's, uh, let's just ignore the condition. Let's actually go down to this more simple one. Weapon start, needle spines, attack start, animation bracket start, attack, and then it's opening is it attack. This is basically what plays his animation when he uses his weapon, his attack animation. So that that's fine. It plays his animation, and everything. Uh, and then what you're going to have to do is you make a weapon stop. So when his weapon is stopping, he uh, stops the animation. It's right here. Animation bracket stop attack. So when he starts attacking, it'll play the animation, attack, and then opening his attack. I'm pretty sure that putting that extra attack there is important. Otherwise, it won't play the animation. And then you got needle spines attack stop. That's when he stops attacking, the animation bracket stop attack. So it stops the animation attack. So if you delete this, just had animation attack start he would attack and then the animation would just play over and over because there's nothing that is that there's nothing that is there to stop the animation basically uh, I'm not gonna go over any of this but yeah you got weapon start had just melee so now he's got a totally different you know different um, animation just for his melee because of course when he uses melee, he uses his melee anim animation. <clears throat> then when he uses his needle spines, which is ranged, he uses 
his ranged animation, attack animation, and melee attack animation. So I'm just going to go all the way down here, just ignore all that. I'm going to right click, do add event, and we're going to find unit birth. Unit birth is a very uh, easy and um, like general used uh, event in actors. Basically this calls when the unit is born, when the unit is created, it will call this event. Now let's click this and let's find set tint and I'm just going to hit like green. So this is basically what it's going to do is as soon as the unit is born it's going to send the tit to green. Now this isn't going to take effect if we click OK. It's not going to take effect in the editor because this doesn't uh, call as the unit being born. Even if I create another one it's not going to update anything. You have to play the game and then he'll turn green. But we're not going to do that yet. So let's go back to events and uh, so that's you can change the color to however you want um, HDR multiplier this is how intense the color is say it will affect more detail on the model the higher you go so if you do 10 it's going to show like no detail it's just going to be a blob of pure green pretty much even higher and it just makes it more intense I guess you could say uh, but for now I'm just going to do 2 which is a uh, creates kind of a cool green effect and I'm just gonna click on this copy paste and now I'm gonna show you another action you can use which is set opacity uh, the opacity is basically uh, I think I whatever so I don't know uh, opacity is how much of the unit model is shown if you know what opacity is then you already understand how this works probably one is basically how it looks in game. If you do zero, then it's going to be invisible. If you do something like 0.5, then it's going to look kind of like a ghost, like it's kind of like faded. So I'm just going to do that just to show you guys. This is only going to take effect when you test the game. Um, I think that's a good point. Yeah, that's uh, so that's actors, and then one last thing. If you go down here where it says token unit name, um, Bobio, it's uh, oh, when I change that, it just I'm just gonna change it back to Hydralis. Just just do that. Just, there we go. All right, so token this is the unit that is connected to this is the actor uh, this is the actor and it has this little token here which is the unit and it takes that unit and that's what the unit that he uses that it is well it's using that it's uh, attached to or linked to so if you change this to um, if you change this to something else, then it's not then nothing's going to be linked to this this unit, and nothing's going to be shown. It's going to be invisible. I don't know why that closed. So that's what that is for. If you want to change this, um, like if you're making an actor from scratch and a unit from scratch, then you're going to have to link that to the unit that you made. You have to link your actor to the unit you made right here. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over to the units tab and find Hydralisk. This is Hydralisk that we have been talking about and modifying uh, the actor for. So now the unit is basically all, if I go back here, I'm gonna show you again, it's all the data and this is all the information. This is where all the, the important non-visual stuff is uh, can be modified and everything. Um, yeah, we talked about model, the visuals, actor, middleman. The actor takes the model, but then the unit takes the actor, and then it creates this whole unit in the game. This is our hydralisk, basically. 
and if we're talking about the game we're making uh, the unit is going to have like the health I'll just go over uh, so here we go with the unit um, got abilities and the command card abilities are just I'm not going to go into this too deeply like the if I go into abilities by itself that's going to be like a, a whole video in itself <laughs> like uh, yeah basically so ability is just like like it shows here stop attack move and then it's going to have hydro's burrow if you double click on that you can add different abilities to it uh, it was frenzy and then you can go to the command card basically the command card is shows the buttons for the abilities which all that is you know project for itself will show you about buttons abilities and all that later on a different video but that's basically where you would edit those um, so then weapons uh, you can add weapons to it. Um, see, it's got needle spines and melee. Those are basically uh, yeah, the other weapons used for attacking and stuff. Uh, the cost this is how much the unit will cost when you purchase it via a, uh, a an ability from like you know the the larva when you purchase it. So you know it's 100 minerals, 50 vespine, acceleration. Uh, I mean, I guess I might as well go through a lot of these because they're kind of important. Acceleration basically is how fast you want your unit to start to move. So 1000 is instant acceleration. Your unit is going to move. There's going to be no warm up. There's no uh, there's no slow slow movement at first. It's just going to move instantly. If you summon like 20, then it's going to move like it's like sliding it's like it's sliding on ice basically and I'm actually just gonna keep it there for reference and game like uh, a lot of the air units are gonna have lower acceleration because they're in the air and well you probably noticed that they have you know it takes a while for them to start reaching their maximum speed which is what we're gonna get into now we got your max speed right here this is how fast you want your unit to be uh, if you do something like you know, point 0.1, that's going to be like a snail, and do something like you know ten, that's going to be like ridiculously fast. I'm just going to leave it at 2.25 for now. And then your radius. This is the um, like no matter how large your actual actor looks and scale. This is going to be, I'm just going to grab a little region. This is going to be the, I think, there we go. How, uh, I'm just going to get another unit for reference. This is going to be, the radius is basically, right here, the, the movement radius is going to be how, um, how big of this radius is will, determine how um, you know until he until a unit uh, will, will be able to interact with him will like bump into him so like the larger it is then you know if I make his radius like five like that then this unit won't be able you know this will be the radius of the unit I guess you can say Just trying to figure out how to, to word that so this unit will won't be able to move into the blue into the blue because that's the unit's radius that's how large the unit is so he'll only be, be able to move around like that if i put the radius to like five uh point six that's um that's like basically the size of how he is right now which is good buildings will have like a radius like two or three because they're larger that's what the radius is it's well, it says right here, radius at which unit can interact with other units. Interact means uh, collide, like bumping into them. I think I think that's pretty good on that. Uh, went to a lot there. Uh, then you got inner radius, which is the radius at which the unit will interact with buildings. So there's units and there's buildings. Uh, plane array. This is 
the unit in which um, I mean the uh, the the plane which is like ground air or well I mean yeah that's all you got ground and air so if you do ground and air that will mean that the unit will act both as a ground and air unit that it can be attacked on it says right here plane on which the unit can be attacked if both plane ground are enabled then the unit can be attacked both by land and air uh, yeah some of the tooltips are tel helpful you can go over them but I'm just gonna do uh, ground for now that's what the plane array is uh, turning rate this is the rate at which this is the speed at which your unit turns so you do something like it is right now 999 that's like instantaneous turning if you do like I think like uh, I forget when it starts becoming non instantaneous I'm sure if you do something like 100 it'll have slow turning but yeah, that's what that is um, cargo size this is how large the unit will be inside of a uh, a unit that has cargo that has loading and an unloading ability like uh, medevac or overlord or nidus worm so if you put like eight then that's really uh really big that's going to take up like a full overlord and then you can do like zero cargo size you can put like infinite in there uh whatever you want to do uh, all right so this is this is important the life maximum life regeneration rate and life starting amount now life starting amount and life maximum generally are always the same uh, the maximum is the uh, max health the starting amount is like the current health that um, is the one that is affected when you're damaged maximum health doesn't change the starting amount does uh, basically you uh, if you want change life maximum say like 500 then he's gonna have 500 health but only 80 of that health he's gonna currently have of it so if you change this to 500 then that fixes that you want to keep those same generally unless you're doing something weird or different I don't know uh, life regeneration rate this is how much health it gains per second so if you do if you do uh, so like 10 he's gonna gain 10 health per second that's his regeneration and it's pretty simple self-explanatory there uh, I'm not gonna go over these sight radius this is um, the radius at which he sees through um, uh, the vision he has that he sees through fog so if you do something like 32 which is a max it doesn't X here this by the way will show the limits uh, between you can put the, the number in or the integer so you can only go from 0 to 32 like if I try to type in 40 and hit like right here you can't go higher than that or if I do 50 and I try to hit OK see it reset back to 32 it's you can't go higher than 32 so 32 is like extremely far sight um, I'll actually just I'll leave it at like 25 just for to show you how that is affected in game when we launch it eventually uh, supplies this is well it supplies it's um, basically if you wanted to take away supplies you do negative two or I mean I'm sorry you do a negative number like negative eight or whatever that'll take away supplies from your uh, from your from your supplies if you have a positive number then that means you know it acts as like a pylon it will give you supplies rather than take away so let's go to attributes this is where you can modify your attributes you got armored biological heroic you can go through all of them you know you got structure psionic this is where you can uh, modify attributes which um, like if you want bonus damage on specific amount on specific units like this will receive bonus damage from other units depending on whether or not the damage um, is extra to biological biological or light so 
I'm sure a weapon like a flamethrower or something would have or deal extra damage to biological so that's what that is I mean I'm sure you've observed that in Starcraft 2 like melee and stuff uh, flags this is this is kind of like an overall general um, kind of like control like where, how you can like control and modify the unit like just overall general things about it you got if you go all the way down you got these all these important ones you can make him make it whether or not he is targetable so that is if you try to place an ability on him it won't be able to target him he'll be untargetable um, unselectable you won't be able to select him or if you want him to be selected so right now unchecked he is selectable and he also unchecked untargetable he is targetable um, if you select worker this will display like if he's idle idling or not it will display like idled worker um, I th I'm not sure what else that does other than that uh, on commandable you can make it so that you can't issue any commands to him but he will he will still be able to keep moving around and doing stuff on his own um, turnable means you could turn around and stuff I'm just gonna go through the important ones of these but not all of them um, let's see. oh right here if you uncheck this no tooltip this is right here this is where you can uh, determine whether or not the tooltip that I showed you in the actor this is connected to actor tooltip the highlight tooltip that is displayed above his head when you highlight so I'm just gonna check that show you movable well he when he can move uh, and vulnerable this makes it so he is unkillable or not uh, that's kind of an important one if you're making uh, units that are vulnerable and stuff uh, can it be clicked can it be highlighted I actually I'm not sure what those do I haven't ever messed with those really I don't even know if they do anything uh, this is a bunch of AI stuff I'm not gonna get into that um, oh then you got cloaked right here if you want your unit to start and be permanently cloaked you can check or uncheck that okay so and what I just did I made him what was it oh yeah I changed because modify I changed the tooltip so now it's gonna show the tooltip just so you know that uh, remind you um attack priority this is attack target priority is basically the higher this is I think is the higher it is when it has a higher priority than this is. yeah so if this unit has a higher attack priority than another unit then he will be attacked first rather uh, before the other unit so I think 20 is generally what m all units are at and then I think structures are like lower because they have a lower attack priority because they don't attack or they're not you know a priority to be attacked for for that reason uh, kill experience is experience points given to the killer uh, creep speed multiplier this is the speed at which his movement speed is increased when he's moving across creep so right now it's at 1.3 that basically means he can move 30% faster when moving across creep. Um, lateral acceleration. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Well, it just says right here amount of side to side speed the unit gains until it reaches its maximum speed. Yeah, I haven't really ever messed with that. Um, but you can. Glossary this is information of the unit of it in the glossary. Subgroup priority this is kind of important when you select multiple units um, within the higher the higher this is the higher this will be on the in the unit panel so this will if this is like higher than everything else in the in all the units that you select if that unit has the highest subgroup priority then that will be the one that is displayed with the command card right here and it's the one that you control the abilities from so units like High Templars, Infestors, uh, I'm sure stronger units like 
Thors and Colossus and like uh, uh, the mothership probably have higher subgroup priorities because they have abilities whereas other normal units don't have or don't have as much as so like Hydralis has a low subgroup priority because it doesn't have any abilities really I think it might have one um, let's see uh, behaviors uh, that's uh, that's also a whole fucking uh, that's a whole video in itself uh, energy you got energy maximum and energy starting amount that's basically same thing as health but for energy and you got your regeneration rate um, and then you got your armor your life armor which is um, well just armor like you said 25 then you got 25 armor uh, shield armor is armor that you have when your shields are up and then you got your shield shield maximum shield starting amount same thing as health that's your shields uh, then your regeneration rate I don't really need to go over those vision vision height is like if you got a cliff so I'm just gonna place a cliff like like that then if your vision height is I think default is zero yeah then you won't be able to see over the cliff naturally but some units like you know air units will have higher vision height because they're able to see because they're flying they're able to see over cliffs so if you give this hydralisk a vision height I think if you give it like at least one then he'll be able to see over this cliff but if there's like another cliff that's even higher he won't be able to see over that one unless you give him like two I think that's how that works so uh, fidget if you click on this this isn't really I mean if you want to get into it if you want to make a unit that like wanders around stuff um, this is a chance array so basically right now it's that 100 chance the unit will idle always and you got your seconds of delay at which it will idle so if I do like if I add like 50 move change this idle to like 50 so now he has a 50% chance of idling and 50% chance of moving and then you can do distance um, which is the distance at which he can move and then you can also do turn and animation uh, which is like his idle animation or something I guess I don't know but yeah that's what that is I'm just going to accept that just to show you uh, fog visibility if you click this um, dimmed uh, it just shows the unit like I think when when you um, I'm not exactly sure how to explain that uh, but hidden is of course you know you can't see it when you when you go by it and it goes back into the fog you won't be able to see it at all snapshot I think that shows you it but you aren't able to select it or anything it just shows it I want to say it shows it like kind of dimmed but then you got dimmed here I don't know um, I might have got it mixed up but uh, anyways you, you just mess with that uh, visible is me means it's always visible if you set the fog, fog visibility visible it will always be visible no matter where the unit is whether or not you have vision of it or not so let's set the hidden that's what that is height this is uh this is kind of fun uh parameter um like flying units will usually have like a higher height because they're off of the ground this basically show this um sets how high the unit is from the ground that's that's pretty much it so next is uh minimap radius this is the uh, how large you know the unit is on the minimap the dot or whatever you can even change the minimap icon for the unit which is done in the actor if you can find that it's like it's called like minimap icon or whatever you can change that but then you got to scale it so then it doesn't it isn't too big or too small 
All right, so going down. Da, da, da. Behavior response. I'm not gonna get into that. Uh, turrets. This is where you'll have in turrets. Uh, I mean, you can see some examples right here. You got auto turret, battle cruiser, um, photon cannon, dragoon. You got a uh, Goliath. This is basically where you would add a turret, where turret functionality for a unit, um, which a turret is just a weapon that spins around. And yeah. Uh, Alright, so we got uh, movements, da, 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 mover. This is what's going to determine how a unit moves. So, uh, this can be modified. If you want to do fly, you can make the unit f so it moves, it acts as a flyer. So, it's going to move over cliffs and stuff. Nothing on the ground is going to block it. You can also do, uh, I think, cliff jumper. That's gonna act as like how a uh, a reaper uh, moves around the map. It jumps over cliffs and stuff. And yeah, you can do whatever you want. That uh, it's gonna do ground uh, paddling front f f uh, footprint. This is basically a preset uh, r movement radius. So this is gonna create an, its own uh, movement radius. Even if you have a low movement radius, this is going to create a preset radius that's going to um, be in the unit. So if you do, for example, 3x3 three three is pretty huge, just like the size of a Nexus, I think. Or that's like the size of like you know a big base structure. 3x3, three three, that would be like, you know, like that. So setting that movement radius on them creates that preset radius like that. So I guess you know if you want to use that, I don't know. However you want to use that, I'm just gonna undo. Uh, then placement dead. This is gonna create a footprint when it's dead. I guess that's useful if. Uh, uh, just an example, like you got. Um, if you want to talk about. Um, this this MOBA map I made where your turrets when they die it created a dead footprint uh, uh, pallion footprint so and then it created a dead model too which was like rubble or whatever so a unit couldn't pass um, that unit when it was dead normally you can pass units when they're dead of course but if you want to add this footprint then they won't be able to pass it uh, which you can, which I did with that turret, and then units want to be able to pass the destroyed turret, uh, which you can do for different things, um, like giant structures. If you want them, if if they if they're destroyed, to give them a dead footprint, um, you can do that. And then you got a uh, this footprint is basically the footprint that is used when you're placing uh, it basically sticks to the grid um, I think yeah like so if you're moving your mouse like right here then it's gonna place it right here then you're moving and you move your mouse right here then it's gonna place it right here and then it's gonna place it right here if you move your mouse right here and it's gonna it's gonna like snap it to like the center of that grid whatever whatever uh, footprint you make that <clears throat> it's gonna snap it to it via the grid so yeah that's like if you want to um, yeah however you, you can figure that out uh, push priority allows for units to push lower priorities so push priority is when your unit like for example ultralisks are able to push smaller units out of the way because they're huge so they have a higher push priority if you have a lower push priority then you're pushed out of the way by units with higher push priority um, yeah that's pretty much it I don't think that affects I don't know if that affects enemy units think uh, if I just search push 
But you got allied push priority as well. I think I think push priority might also affect enemies. I don't know, you can best for that. I'm just gonna keep moving on. Uh separation radius. Distance between air units and a squadron. So that's like regular movement radius, but separation radius is for air units, I guess. Yeah, um, alright, oh, you got delays too for your energy and health regeneration. So basically, um, when a unit is attacked, it will have a delay for it to, um, like if it's health, if it's attacked, then it'll have a, you can put a delay like for it to, uh, to regenerate its health. So if you put like five seconds, it's attacked, you have to wait five seconds and then it'll start regenerating. Energy, when you use an ability to use energy, you can put a delay to wait like five seconds, then your energy will come back. Uh, that's how that works. Um, I think that's it for units. Um, I think that's it for the tutorial, actually. Yeah, so I'll just go over like a quick overview again and paint over here. <clears throat> Basically, I'll just say it again. You got your your model first, which is the visual, and you got your actor, which acts as the middleman for the unit um, that connects the model to it. And then the actor you use uh, give modifiers to the actor that control the how the model acts I mean it's in its name it's an actor you know it's an actor for the model it um it takes the model then it acts for it it does things for it and it controls how the model is how it looks what it does you can add different stuff to it uh it's basically like a modifier for the act for the model and then the unit is the actual in-game uh, information uh, that takes the actor and uses that for for itself so it can actually there's an actual visual so you can see something yeah it's pretty much the whole unit breakdown pretty much the whole breakdown of this tutorial I was uh, really uh, really in depth I just wanted to go and so you really get it I understand everything about uh, units and actors and models and how they correlate with each other and the important things you need to know because uh, this is useful for creating your own custom units um, yeah and I'll probably go over more um, and a different videos on different other other different things uh, but for now I'm actually just gonna test this and show you what our hydralis looks like <coughs> alright go over here so now you see our hydralis has this cool like green ghosty looking effect you see it's kind of like faded and you see the 500 health and you also see how <clears throat> 25 vision range looks like it's pretty pretty OP like that's uh, pretty far and you see you got ability so that's what the actor is see it modifies the model and now uh, you got your unit which is hydralis right here it has all the information. You got your weapon. Um, yeah, which we'll go over like weapons and effects later in different uh, tutorial. But this was just a general breakdown, <clears throat> just for the general stuff, just for the general unit uh, information. <clears throat> this is the actual. This is just the unit tab we went over. We have yet to get into the. Uh, Abilities, behaviors, buttons, uh, I mean the list goes on, you know, there's a lot more to learn, of 
course. But, uh, yeah, I'll probably make more tutorials on that. And you see, I upped the regeneration to 10, so now he's not dying. Because his damage isn't dealing more than that. Yeah, I think that's a good point to end. Uh, hope you enjoy the video. Uh, Kata out.